Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Monday Night Mastermind, Monday Night Show. We have an amazing guest with us here tonight. Um, but before I go there and give people some time to hop on, because, you know, being on time is a challenge and a struggle in this society. However, thank you all for being here on time and being here before the music ended. <clears throat> uh, there is some new faces in here, new names I haven't seen. So I'll just do a quick introduction of myself, of this call, the intentions I have here, and the intentions I have the calls that I do every Monday. Um, my name is Alex, and I've been running this call for a little over a year now, right? A year and six months, I think. So we've been doing this uh, every Monday night, and this is inspired um, by an elderly woman in Publix where I felt the responsibility to teach people how to create financial freedom and be responsible with their money and, and, and being able to see what else is possible, right? Because what has been promised in the last generation was not fulfilled, right? There's so many, so many elders out there that are, you know, that are not financially free. There are a lot of people getting to that retirement age and are scared because the source of income is not going to come anymore. Now what, right? Maybe they have 300, 400,000 saved up, ready to come out of retirement, uh, the, the IRA accounts. That is not a very safe feeling. See, right now, for some of us, we might be like, yeah, 400K would be nice. But that's because we can still hustle. We can still grind. We're not going to that retirement age. We're not getting there, right? But for people that, are, that work their whole lives, hoping that they were going to retire with a million dollars, a million plus dollars, and then finding out that they're not going to. It's a false promise. And, you know, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Young, uh, that book definitely drastically changed my life, which had me take on, take financial freedom and retirement to my own, into my own hands. I knew I could do it. And you don't really have to do too much. Through real estate, right, when you have a certain level of discipline, when you have a certain relationship to money, you can, you can create financial freedom pretty quickly. Now, I'm not just saying that because I had success all the way across. On the team call right before this, we talked a lot about failures and how do we look at failures. Multiple times in my life, I started a venture and fell flat on my face. Okay, the, the worst one being when I lost my restaurant, I lost my house, I lost my car, couldn't afford a phone, and I had to just pack everything up $9,000 in my bank account, moved down to Florida. Okay, I moved from New Jersey to Florida, had really nothing left. And it was scary. It was the scariest moment of my life. And, um, you know, and, and I was able to get back from that. Now, that hasn't been a really, it wasn't a long time ago. It was about five and a half years ago when I had nothing, when I was experiencing that. Okay, I did really well in real estate, leveraged my real estate to open up two restaurants. Doing all of this without a mentor, without anybody to guide me, without a call like this for me to at least ask somebody if it was a good idea to mortgage my house, take out the equity to buy two restaurants. If I said that right now, there will probably be a bunch of objections on this people in here with or without real estate knowledge. At least I would get some sort of idea. But I was young. I wanted to be the cool guy. I wanted to be the man on campus. I was in my college campus for like 10 years. Everybody knew me. I was like, how do I become more known? Let me open up two restaurants. Never done that in my life. Okay, so I leveraged it, did that, lost it all, and even had my car, my car repoed. So I went to a real estate seminar. That was my first one after that because I always knew real estate was, gonna, was the path for me. And I learned how to do partnerships. I was like, wait, I don't need money or I don't need my credit, right? Because I couldn't use any of it. And I can still create financial freedom. And I think there's a, maybe some people, no, they're not. I saw somebody on this call that I was there during that time when I lost everything. But I was able to come back through partnerships. And I always believed in partnerships after that because the first person that invested with me in our first real estate deal my first airbnb that i did see airbnb allows you to accelerate 
Airbnb is not the end goal. Airbnb is like, you just got a nice job right here. Okay. So um, I did Airbnb. I did it really well. We did like almost 300% returns for my investor in like less than two years. And he told his friend, he did another one. His friend told his friends very quickly within three and a half years, I scaled up to about 12, 12 units of Airbnbs that we owned that was a 50% owner on and I didn't put any money or anything down, but I ran them. It was hard work. Okay. I ran into a lot of stuff. I'll even tell you a story that happened yesterday, but I was like, yeah, I'm financially free. I got a, a crew that ran the Airbnb for me. I moved down to Peru. I was down there for about nine months. I was like, this is the life. I don't need to do anything. I just go and, uh, and do this for the rest of my life. I came back to Florida. I packed all my stuff to move down to Peru permanently. And, um, you know, and then when I came during that time, when I came back was when I ran into that woman in, um, in, in Publix. So it took me on a whole different trajectory of teaching. I always taught spirituality stuff. I taught Course in Miracles. And, you know, now I'm like, all right. I got to take my real estate knowledge, my financial knowledge, my courage, my leadership. I got to put it all out there so that we can, I can impact somebody's life. And it's all about impact for me. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do any more real estate, but you know, it's about impact. It's about leading. It's about creating a bigger difference. Now, if I, if I want to make myself, my own life good and my wife's life good. Yeah. We got that accomplished. Then what? Right. I'm still young. How do we, how do I impact more people? That means I have to do more deals. I have to teach more people. I have to work with more people, make new connections, build new relationships. And um, so that's why this call is really happening. Okay. So it started in November of 2021. And now we're a year and a half in. And it started with three people in this call. <laughs> We've reached up to 170 at some point, but you know, Everybody is running these types of Zoom calls now, so I'm sure it's a, it's a challenge to be a part of everything. So I appreciate every single one of you for making it onto this one, for making a priority to be here, to witness me, to witness our guest today. And <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Yes, it was Rock Leaves. Um, and in the beginning, I was like, I don't really know anything. I don't know enough to have the confidence to keep running this. So I kept bringing on guests that was bigger than me. That was much bigger. I wanted to flash them, show them. And it did give me some credibility and it helped me along with my journey. But now I want to showcase people and I want to use this stage to help bring people up. Okay. I want people to have an opportunity to be on this stage, share things. I've brought people from my CPA to Rockleaf to uh, my 16 year old protege over here running these calls. Um, and it's just value being provided for everyone. There's value being provided for me being here. There's value provided for everybody here. So what we're going to, what we're going to do today is I will, you know, speak for another five minutes into a philosophy, a tip, just an idea, a perception, a perception shift, maybe. And then we're going to bring our guest up as a speaker and we're going to talk about YouTube today. Okay. And the reason why we're going to talk about YouTube, because it has everything to do with the future and creating financial freedom as well. And if you want to be successful in your business, this might be an avenue you want to start. Because if I think about, you know, one of the questions I ask on my podcast to my guests is, what do you wish you did or, or that you did more of earlier in your life? And multiple people answered YouTube. And, I, and me too. I spent so much time watching YouTube videos back in the day when I could have gotten started on something, anything. And by today, I would have a big YouTube presence. Right? So yeah, JJ too. He's like, man, I wish I did YouTube earlier. So we all have that. We all have that something. Right? And hopefully today I can shed some light, shed some knowledge on this platform and how you can use it to move forward with your business and your life and creating financial freedom. Okay, now, before I do that, um, 
this call used to be focused on multifamily real estate investing only. And it kind of still is. Because if you think about the analogy of a car, multifamily and real estate investing is a vehicle. It's a part of getting somewhere to do it. If you just focus on maybe the engine part of the car, it will run. The car will run. But what kind of, how, how do you want to do the deals? You could do a deal with just the engine, with just the very basics of real estate. But once you get into it and you start working with people, there are people relationship skills that you got to develop. There's leadership skills that you got to develop, you know, understanding different platforms so that you can move yourself forward faster. These are all different parts of the cars. And I want to create an overall, uh, a whole holistic view, I guess, of the entire process of becoming financially free through real estate investing. Okay, so even when I talk about YouTube, it is still about real estate. It is still about creating financial freedom for yourself, the, the why you do it and who's driving behind the car. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our guests. And then at the end of the call, you're gonna get a chance to do networking. You're gonna just get to go into different rooms with different people. And um, you know your network is your net worth. So, and, and it's true. It's so true because we never have a money problem. We never really have other problems besides people problem. If you just knew somebody that can help you solve a problem, that's, that's the solution right there. It's in people. People will help you do it. All right. So, okay. Let's bring JJ up here. Nick, can you highlight JJ and myself somehow? Pin us so that I can see JJ better. Hello. Yo, Hi. what's, what's up? up? What's up, dude? Nothing much. So, uh, what, what do you what do you do? Tell me what you do. Tell me how old you are. Tell the guests how old you are. I am seventeen years old, and uh, for the last six months to a year, I've been doing nothing but obsessing over YouTube and video creation and how to grow a channel, how to get views, and just business in general and that sort of perspective and uh along the way i've helped various channels uh one of them which is alex's channel um i'm helping a bunch of channels reach their goals in terms of subscribers and views um and yeah that's sort of what i was doing um where i started was acting i was an actor um ever since i was like i could walk really and uh that didn't really work out then i was like I really enjoy being on camera and being the center of attention. So I'm going to do YouTube now. And it was, I don't know, it's a lot more enjoyable for me than acting. Um, it's really fun. I enjoy watching YouTube. I enjoy making videos. That's all I did today was making videos. And yeah, it's pretty much me. Um, uh, so YouTube is very important to learn because um, of the fact that uh, you need to get known in business. Anybody that is big at business is known. Like you, know, like Bill Gates, Elon Musk. Like if Elon Musk tweets something, then like everyone knows about it. Like it's all over YouTube, and YouTube is the biggest platform right now for that type of stuff. Um, it will continue to be the biggest platform for that kind of stuff because. It's already downloaded on uh, Android devices, which take up about half of all devices, um, which is really crazy. And it has just created its first billionaire influencer. An influencer has become a billionaire off of YouTube. I don't know if you guys know him. His YouTube channel's name is Mr. Beast. Um, I talk about him an awful lot um, because he's very smart in videography and getting people's attention. Mm -hmm. So... Whenever learning YouTube, and if you want to grow a channel, if you want to start a channel, you've probably heard about something called the YouTube algorithm. Um, yeah. If you wait, ever hold on, hold on. Before we go, before we get all all technical into YouTube, can you give us a little bit of a difference between, you know, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, all of that? Because I think. People are kind of just dabbling into all sorts of things just because they're like, oh, well, other people are doing it, so I got to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So people are dabbling into all the stuff. 
Why YouTube over everything else? Because YouTube is the platform that is has the highest rate that people would actually really like do something like if a hundred thousand followers on YouTube goes ten times further than a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. So like Grant Cardone, I learned about him from YouTube. A lot of people have learned about him from YouTube. Some have learned about him from Instagram, but people that I've met have learned about him from YouTube. Um, like you can't really like off the top of your head, nobody could really uh, name an Instagram influencer, someone that was an influencer that started on Instagram. I can name at least 10 people that have started on YouTube and become influencers just because the platform was really built for that. Instagram and different stuff like that was really built for people that were famous in other places so they could have a platform to talk. YouTube is really mm. built there for you to grow, I feel like. So I did it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. See, where was JJ before all this? <laughs> Come on, Nick. Yeah. So Okay, so let's so YouTube and also anybody that has questions, right? Just put it in the comments and we can we can um we can answer as we go too. Um someone is there a target more about content length and depth? So yeah, now you can, the questions are now going into the details and the, all the algorithm stuff. So carry on. Yes. So the algorithm, uh, is the target more about content length and depth? Well, um, whenever we're talking about the algorithm, um, is I'm going to explain that for people who don't know what that is first, before I get in all that stuff. It's essentially the recommendations on YouTube. It recommends all the videos that YouTube knows you want to watch. Like if you're into car videos, it will recommend you car videos. So it's pretty important to know what that is uh, beforehand, uh, before you get into YouTube and stuff. So yeah, the length of YouTube videos does have a lot to do with stuff. It just depends on what kind of YouTube videos you're doing and the idea behind it. Like if you were doing a video where you were going to, um, you know, set up a bunch of dominoes and stuff, people's not going to really watch you set up a bunch of dominoes and uh, knock them over uh, for a long period of time. So you might want to do a short about that. Uh, but if you're going to do something where you like, uh, like a top 100 video or something like that, where it's here, then there, then there, and then maybe someone will be prone to watching that longer. So and different stuff like that, it really depends on the idea whether you should do long or uh, short form. Um, I prefer doing long form if you want to create money and wealth off of the platform. But if, you, if your number one goal is to get views to sell other things, it's short form because shorts are 10 times easier to get views on. Um, so everyone talks about the algorithm and there's just a bunch of different definitions that people put behind it but if we really boil it down uh youtube is a company just like any other company they want people to stay on their platform and watch videos because that's how they make money how they make money is by showing ads to people while they're watching a video so their one goal is to keep people watching videos people are like oh well the youtube algorithm would push your video more if you comment, if you like, that really doesn't matter. Comments actually do nothing to push your video. Likes do 0.3% to push your video. It's like almost zero to push your video. The only thing, there's only two metrics that um, really help when pushing, pushing your video is your click-through rate, which your click-through rate is the amount of people that get recommended your video ratioed to the people that actually click on your video. So if 10 people were to scroll past your video, uh, or if nine people were to scroll past your video and one person were to click on it, that'd be a 10% click-through rate because one out of 10 people would click on it. Um, that rate really um, should, uh, there's not really a perfect number there. It should really depend on uh, you and like what your average is and you beating your own goal, essentially. That's how YouTube really determines that and the, the type of videos in your niche that you're making compared to other people in your same niche. And the second metric that goes to the algorithm that is really good is um, 
retention, which is how long you could actually keep people watching your video for. So if someone clicks on your video and only watches 10 seconds of it, that's a terrible retention. That's only 10 per, like, or depending on how long the video, if it was a 10 second video, then maybe it's a good retention. But if it's like a 10 minute video, that's, that's terrible retention. So you know, the goal is to keep people um, on your videos. So how do you get, how do you do better with these two metrics? How do you get higher metrics? Especially if you don't have camera equipment, if you don't have editors, if you only have your phone, like how, how do you really um, do this? How do you get higher numbers here? First, I'm going to tell you how to get higher click through rate stuff that's happened for me. Cause whenever I started out, all I had was my mom's camera and a lap or I think I used my computer. Yeah. So my computer and my mom's camera, I didn't really have that much. Um, and I used a free editing software. Um, let me answer this question real fast. Is building an audience more of a slow build on YouTube versus scaling on IG? Okay, so scaling on Instagram is a lot um, hard, harder for me because you do get a lot of views on Instagram at first. Like I've gotten two videos. I had over like a hundred thousand followers or reels, I guess you'd call them, but like, I've only gotten like three followers for those. Um, so you really need to like know how to get, uh, more followers on Instagram, but on YouTube, people are more likely to hit subscribe and for you to grow an audience on there. Um, people, it depends on your knowledge of the algorithm and how you can read trends and like how you could jump on trends, like sort of like stocks, like um, Mr. Beast, he had a uh, scene squid game was big. And at the peak of squid game, he made a squid game video and it blew up like this. It was like his most viewed video till this day. And small, it still works for small YouTubers. People are like, um, I can't get a million views. I've only got 20 subscribers. And I'm like, if you, if someone, came out and had 20 subscribers and made a video that had the quality of Mr. Beast, they would get very close to the same amount of views that Mr. Beast has because um, the video kept their attention and the click through rate, which is really interesting if you actually look into it. So um, how do you get higher click through rate? Um, first is always do a custom thumbnail. Um, whether it's taking a picture, whether you actually edit it in Photoshop or whatever, always do a custom thumbnail uh, that pertains to your video. Um, whenever you're doing these uh, thumbnails, you want a certain emotion to be behind it. So that whenever someone th sees your thumbnail, because you have to understand whenever you're seen on a recommended page, your thumbnail, it's not like they put videos that are um, worse next to you. Like you're competing with the biggest YouTubers on the platform uh in terms of thumbnails like a mr beast video thumbnail can be right next to yours and someone's choosing to click on which one so you really got to make sure that your thumbnails are good the top um emotions that i've seen through thumbnails are a intrigue if you can get someone interested in a thumbnail if you you know can uh get someone asking a question like um how did this man go from homeless to worth $2 million? You know, something like that. It's like, oh, I wonder how they went from homeless to two, to a million dollars. That's pretty straightforward, but uh, number um, or B is uh, negative news. So if I'm saying specifically negative news because the human mind just loves negative news. I don't know what it is, but people are just like, if you even look at the news today, like everything's negative is because that's what we want. That's what people watch. They're like, Ooh, what happened bad today? What, what drama happened with this celebrity, you know? So people like negative news. They don't like to admit it, but you know, that's something that you could put in thumbnails, like, uh, you know, different things like this bad thing happened to this celebrity, you know? So negative news is really good and really effective whenever you're putting in thumbnails. Hmm. Um, the next thing is fear and FOMO, fear of missing out. Someone like Graham Stephan does this a lot. He, he says, do this now 
or else you lose all your money, you know, like something like that. And they're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to lose all my money. I got to click on this video now, 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 you know? So you really got to use fear or FOMO and like fear of missing out is FOMO for those of you who don't know. And it is very effective with getting high click through rate, but all of these you really need to pull off. I suggest going and looking at different channels to see how they do it. If you're going to um, do a uh, finance channel, which I feel like a lot of people on this call will do a finance channel because it is a, uh, you know, sort of the niche in this call. Hey, uh, hey, why don't, why don't we, why don't we have everybody in the, in the chat come up with the most, who, who can come up with the most attractive uh, line, I guess, for your, for, for a video. And then we'll have JJ kind of say which one is the best. So you guys come up with something in your, in the, something that you're interested in. Okay. I already see cash calls going on everywhere. I think that's not that bad because I don't know. There's really not that much cash calls going on, but you got to be careful with all caps because if you're getting paid, then they would actually lower your pay. Ooh. Like for YouTube, they actually lower your pay for having all caps, which is really strange, but it's put under the category of derogatory stuff, which is really strange. <laughs> YouTube needs to fix that. That's just how it is. So the thumbnail, thumbnail is the picture, right? And then you also have the, the, the name of the video. So you actually taught me, you said, let's make thumbnails and the, and the picture or the idea first, and then you go and make the video, mm -hmm. right? So we start brainstorming those things first. So this is a great exercise for those of you guys that, you know, want a little bit of interaction here is, you know, this is, this is to help you get engaged too, right? Um, yeah, write down the most attractive description of a video not description what is it called title title of a video Oof. and let's see who would actually which one of us who would actually click on it and if jj thinks it's good enough so we can start there and then i want you to go into showing us also like how do you take a, how do you look at these kpis how do you look at these types of things oh i like the who wants to be a real estate millionaire i like that one Ooh, that's good. That's good. Grant Cardone is a fraud. Yes. Those, <laughs> videos, those videos get so many views. It's unbelievable. Grant Cardone, like, I feel like at this point, more people don't like him because of all these videos trying to get like clickbait people out of this stuff, you know? Now, what about the, the, like, like Hawk just put how I replace my W2 income with monthly cash flow. So do you feel like that is a, a attractive one, like on a scale of one to 10? Because I feel like that's normally where our minds would go. We don't have the creativity yet, okay, yet until after this call that you go, is Grant Cardone a fraud? And then you talk about something that might not even be fully related. We just go straight into how I did this, how I did that. Do you feel like those types of titles have been played out and people won't click on it? Okay, so the thing with those types of titles and videos, there's like two different types of videos. The one I was just talking about is the ones that get searched, like not really get searched up, but you're scrolling and you see them and you click on them. Uh, the one that Mike uh, was talking about is something that actually someone would type up to search up. So those videos won't get an absurd amount of views very quickly, but the thing with those videos is like, three or four years in the future, they'd still be climbing up. So they have more potential to keep going. It's sort of like a, um, all right, Hawk. Those videos are sort of like different properties. Like if you're going to fix and flip a property, you get like a lump sum of money now, but like you won't get that cash flow. sort of, that's sort of the idea behind a video uh, like that. Right. All right. Hawk, Hawk's on the right track. He's in multifamilies. So he's looking for that, for that long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Good, good feedback on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the is thing that with, too long? Uh, yeah. So the thing with long thumbnails is I like to keep my thumbnails like some, some of my thumbnails are five words or less because the thing today's society, you're competing with like, People are like, oh, you're just competing with the videos, long form videos on your platform. You're literally competing with short form content. You're competing with any other thing that could get somebody's attention. Like if someone's scrolling on their phone at a concert, you're competing with that concert, like for attention. 
So if you make a long thumbnail like that and people are used to watching YouTube shorts, people don't even have to read a thumbnail to watch a YouTube short. It's just there in front of their face, you know? So you're going to want to make your thumbnails uh, shorter, um, a little bit shorter than that. But I do like the idea behind it. That's a good idea. What else? You see any other really good ones here? Okay, let's let's list out the ones that are like seven and above for you. Let's just give them all a quick rating. You know, we'll give everybody a quick rating. So when you look at these, just say, just tell them the the rating that you would give. Um, make money from this economy, cash. <laughs> crash. crash. Uh, oh, crash. Oh, crap. Oh yeah, I like that one. Um, I mean that's that's a little bit of you need to time that one good because that's sort of trend writing um because that's something that would be quickly and then you know go away if the economy is doing a little better so that's sort of like on the opposite end of the spectrum wait till you see her now <laughs> see i, I kind of like that one <laughs> see oh i guess the thumbnail would be you know i don't know I don't, but, somebody but i'm in i'm, I'm curious mm -hmm. who's got my money i feel like that's pertaining to a lot of grant cardone fans <laughs> um make this move now or miss your chance to make millions okay that one's a really good one i do like that one maybe make it a little shorter but i do really like that one that's fomo that's fear of missing out who stole my retirement that's <laughs> that's a good one i like that one <laughs> that one sounds like a um a um <laughs> ad ad uh for you know something like who stole my <laughs> retirement we're gonna go find him you know <laughs> five ways to double your money in real estate now that one sort of falls in the middle like a lot of people would search that up at the same time as people would you know think um instead of that thumbnail i would do uh do this now to double uh your money in real estate you know something like maybe make it a little shorter but uh like five ways to double your money. Um, and then I'll get into retention after that, but the thumbnail does not stop at the, uh, the, the picture and the thing, like the thumbnail keeps going until like the first 30 seconds, because as soon like, if you look at my retention graphs on my videos and just about any YouTubers videos, every single, like, it doesn't matter if you're Mr. Beast, your video in the beginning is going to go like this and then even out. So there's a bunch of people that are clicking off super early and you're going to want to um, have that be less and less. You're going to try to make that first 30 seconds as best and as retentive as possible so that you can, uh, you know, minimize that, you know, downfall. Is and you talk, and that's, that's the hook, right? That's the hook. Yeah, that's the hook. Um, sort of like, um, it's different for long form than it is for short form. I guess I'll talk about short form here in a second, but, um, long form, uh, you don't really want to repeat yourself with the thumbnail. Cause they already know the thing with, I've seen with a lot of like creators, especially in sort of like the community of real estate and like finance and stuff, they make super long intros. And it's like, even just like videos, like learning how to do something. It's like, we're five minutes into the video and he's still talking <laughs> about how his day was. And I'm like, I want to learn how to get this virus off of my computer. Can you teach me how to do that or something like that? And he's still talking about how his dog was sick and he hasn't posted in a few weeks. And it's like, just get to the point. So like, even if you look at like a Mr. Beast video or something, it's literally five seconds. He's like, this is what we're doing. Uh, these are the stakes here. Let's go, you know, and he gets on with the video, you know, is super fast. So you're going to want to speed up your video, make shorter intros, if an intro at all, like you can uh, do. Uh, so whenever making YouTube videos, people don't really pertain that to actual TV, but people on TV, like people don't know that how thought out these movies are and how thought out these TV shows are and keeping your attention. It's very good. The truth, the banks won't tell you why the bank isn't say. Why your money isn't safe in the bank. I do like both of those. I, I, lo I love both of those. Those are good. Hey, why, why don't we transition a little bit to that, to the, to the hook that you're talking about? Cause I was really impressed when you took my ideas because I was like, you know, I gave out some of these lines and then you're like, ah, they suck. 
and then you wrote the new hooks out for me and mm -hmm. i don't know maybe people can kind of start saying something and then you can give them like maybe a different hook or something like that so if i said like you know how to be how, how do you how you be a millionaire in 2023 you know like what what would be like a good hook for to get somebody to start watching that um you know it you're talking about short form or long form uh i don't know what did you show me short form long form yeah i was showing you short form so okay yeah so let, let, let's get some short form in there mm. what millionaires aren't doing so with the hook you really want that's good um for the hook you want to create a question you want to create a question even if you're not flat out asking the question you want them to have a question in their head that makes them watch the video all the way through because a lot of people make videos and they're like um you know talking about their day or something like alex one of his videos i was looking and i had um it was like one of his more viewed videos it got like four or 1300 views i think it was he had 1300 views on a youtube short which is which is good for his channel it's actually was really good and um so i was looking at it and i was looking at the retention graph and it, it went like this it was steady and then it dropped off after like four seconds and his retention was like, I think it was like 70 or 50 to 70 percent. And it could have been a lot higher. It's because he asked a question, right? Never pay taxes again. Never pay taxes again. I would probably change that to uh, do this to never pay taxes again. And then so that's what I'm going to get to, which is like you ask the question and then you don't answer it right away. You answer it at the end of the video. You build up the intrigue, the entire video, and then you you reward them for staying there the whole time. So like Alex, I think it was like Alex said, people are su assuming a lot of loans lately. And people are like, what? That's ha that's happening. I want to see. <laughs> I want to see why. And he immediately told them why they were assuming a lot of loans. And and then like after that, people had no more reason to watch because they're like, oh, well, uh, well, I already know, you know, why am I watching this video? And they scroll past. So if he would have, you know, not told them that until the end of the video, if he would have kept saying things like I'll give you an example. I made a video. It has 19,000 views now. It's my most viewed YouTube short. It did really well on retention. It got like 90 percent retention, which meant that 90 percent of people watched the video all the way through, which is which is really good. So the thing that I did was I asked a question, which was, who is the next YouTuber that will hit 100 million subscribers? So they're like, okay, well, here's the question. I want to know. And then I fed them a bunch of garbage, not really garbage, <laughs> but I fed them a bunch of nonsense, the whole video, just intriguing them, just teasing them the whole time. Like, like this YouTuber does this. And you, I think I said, this YouTuber does some of the craziest stunts that you have ever seen. And then uh, they're like, oh, my gosh, I wonder who it is. Just tell me. Just tell me. And then I finally told them at the end. But I waited till the end. So the hook is not really the hook is the beginning, middle and end. People say that the hook's just the beginning. But it's like you get their attention, but you need to keep it. It's like um, so Alex's video, that one video, like I said, it went like this. And then he gave it to them and it went like this, it, you know, he, he possibly could have had 19, 19,000 views on that video if you would have restructured it. So, and it was a good idea and you, you know, have to have good ideas. Um, where did the chicken wing go? <laughs> oh, oh, um, multifamily for dummies. I feel like that'd be more of a, um, a long form video sort of, um, something that someone would search up they're like what is multifamily i'm wondering you know i see i've seen this grant cardone guy talks about multifamily i'm gonna search that up they're like oh multifamily for dummies i'll do it and never pay taxes again is good if you would reword it a little bit like or actually that might be good like never pay do this to never pay taxes again and then you, you or this is how grant cardone made his billions of dollars right yeah uh, you, okay yeah i'm getting it see i'm getting it <laughs> yeah so and then you tease them. You could be like, um, never pay taxes again. This is what some of the richest people in the do in the world do to avoid taxes. And you can do the same with zero money. And then you say a bunch of different stuff like that. And then, you know, 
obviously tell them at the end. There's a question here. JJ, what do you think about using things like cars to grab attention uh, and driving to things like, to like this where you're showing how you build real, a real estate company? Yeah, that's good. I was telling Alex about that. I said, um, you did a video on cars, but like, I mean, you did a like a vlog and this video I don't think is out yet, but he did a vlog where he was, you know, going and it was the entire day he was uh just showing his business day in uh san francisco i think it was san diego san diego yes and he was just showing you know i guess the life of a millionaire because you know alex is a millionaire and you know he was literally living the ideal life for a millionaire you know going to sick business meetings wearing a suit and tie you know he was going to shop for supercars but the thing was he didn't show too many supercars during the video and i'm like like that was pro like probably one of the only reasons that somebody would hook like someone would actually like get hooked and watch the video because they're like the title would be a day in the life of a millionaire and then they see alex in like a ferrari sitting there like this you know so <laughs> but like you really got to know who your audience is so things like supercars if you have just a video looking at supercars then uh like just with supercars are you talking about it you know it really just depends. You got to study who your audience is. Um, if you look at Graham Stephan, his most viewed video is literally him saying, this is how I afforded a Tesla for $8 a month. I think it was $8 a month or something like that. And it has 8 million views. And it's his most viewed video is because, yes, he did have the car, but he, he was like, this is how you can also get the car, you know? So, yeah, different stuff like that. So retention for long form is a lot different than short form with short form you were asking about time someone was asking about time earlier if you're making a short i really suggest making your video 25 seconds or longer 30 seconds if possible because if you were to um make one that was less than 25 seconds you would need like a 200 percent retention rate which means that someone would need to watch Every person that sees your video would need to watch it one time and then a second time for it to actually get views. So whenever it gets that sort of retention, it would obviously get pushed out more. So, but if you have a longer video, it doesn't need to get a high as, re as high as a retention because YouTube ratios everything. Everything's ratioed because it'd be weird if the ratio was the same on a 10 second video and a 10 minute video because, um, you know, they're different lengths. So watch time is really important. The amount of people, amount of time that you keep people on there. Um, if you ask people to comment on shorts, YouTube shorts, it's different than long form. Uh, comments don't do anything, but if someone's commenting on a video on, on shorts, then that means that uh, the video is normally replaying in the background. So you get more retention. That's sort of a little trick there. Um, not as many people subscribe from shorts and stuff. And uh, I'm trying to do more long form personally because it's more sustainable for the long term. Uh, a lot more people will uh, be watching long form, I feel like, longer um, because it's unique to YouTube. It's very like that's one of the reasons like if someone's going to watch long form, they go to TikTok, you know, they'll go to like Instagram. <clears throat> but long I, have, form I, have, I, have, I have two questions for you, JJ, before I forget, you know, I know this can go on and on. First of all, how should people be structuring out their videos? Because, you know, now that I've been working with you, when I'm thinking about stuff, I actually have this like storyboard in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is this beginning part and I'm not going to give you the answer right after. I'm going to fluff it up with a bunch of things and then the end, right? I don't have the capacity right now to think about a 10 minute video like that, but it is the way that I think now. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I'm practicing it even on this call. I'm like, hmm, how do I do it like constant, constantly over and over on a Zoom call? Mm -hmm. So how do, how should people be structuring their their um their storyboard? Yeah, there you go. How should yeah. they draw it out in their head? So, um, there's something called YouTube storytelling, which is very straightforward. It's what you were talking about. Um, I got the chance. I'm in a mentorship, and I got the chance the chance to work with one of the best YouTube editors in the world. He is edited for Logan Paul. If you guys know who that is, he was his editor for many years. And he talked about that. He said, um, 
that you need to have a, uh, there's like a few things that you need. You need to have a, um, a climax, which is just a normal like story, like, or like not really a climax, but like a, uh, a resistance, a resistance to you. Cause if there's no resistance, then there's nothing that's keeping them watching the video. It's like, oh, this is pretty boring. He's, you know, doing this really easily, you know, like, why am I watching this, you know? Hmm. Uh, but it really depends on what type of video you're making. Like, I feel like a lot of people on here would be making more of like real estate calls and storytelling for that is you want them to sort of, uh, have a reason to stay till the end so before you get a storyboard or anything together you need to have that one thing at the end that somebody will stay for somebody will stay for whether it's just a piece of information or if you're gonna blow up something and it's like really cool looking you know like uh wait till the end because we're blowing up a car you know or you're giving away a little bit of money to help someone out you're wanna, gonna wanna do that at the end because, and sort of tease that the whole way through. There's a bunch of different storytelling strategies, but it really depends on what type of video you have. Um, like top 10 videos, obviously you'll put the best stuff towards the end um, and you'll tease it. Like, have anybody ever clicked on a video and they've seen like, um, they give sort of like a clip of the ending or something crazy that happens. And then before that crazy thing happens, they shoot back to their face and then they're like, this is what's happening. You know, we're going to, that's going to be crazy in the future, but we're going to do that now. We're, we're doing this now, you know? So that's sort of how you want to structure, structure it. Depending on what type of video, it goes super deep. Like I could talk about storytelling for hours, but really uh, you've got to get sort of a, um, like if you're going to do more personal content, you really need to build that up. You need to build up the why the audience is staying. Mm -hmm. Like, like what is the the sort of yeah, bait bait and switch. Uh not so bait and switch, the thing uh people used to do clickbait, right? Like people used to clickbait and stuff, like they used to um put false, you know, thumbnails up. And then Mr. Beast came along and he was putting up the same thumbnails, but he was actually doing the stuff inside the videos, like like. I counted to a million. He literally counted to a million or was it a hundred thousand? And then people <laughs> want to subscribe to you. So if the bait and switch works, you might get a lot of clicks in, re in click through rate, but retention will be down because people will realize halfway through that, you know, you switched them, switched them out. If that's what you mean, I don't know if that's what you mean, but I think you were talking about like the, uh, you sort of, give the uh you know sample of the ending of the video and then you switch over and then you eventually do give them that you want to reward your audience for staying but um definitely give them a reward by the end and you gotta whenever you're doing that whiteboard you really got to think about that reward and that all comes down to the idea the idea there's like the pyramid of of making a video the idea is just the base you know um if you don't have time to come up with good ideas and you want to make uh, videos like a certain content creator, you can go on chat GBT and uh, type up video ideas for this content creator. And it'll give you 100% like original ideas. I tried it with a bunch of YouTubers I liked and it was, it was pretty cool. Obviously I don't have the resources to do most of those, but um, it was really cool. So um, I like coming up with my own ideas because I have a lot of free time and I want to work that muscle you don't really want to rely on things for your idea, but whenever you're doing a storyboard, the first thing is the idea and you want the end result to be the one thing that people stay for. And you got to tease that the whole way. The end know? of the video. Got it. Yeah. So, okay. Like, one, yeah. one more, my one more question before I forget, and this is an important one. I don't know if it's going to stump you or not, but this is something. So All right. would you create videos to draw attention to bring people to watch the video or do you do something that is like authentic to you so for example i may not want to just go and do things to blow things up just to get attention <laughs> i may not want to have you know a video that has me sitting in the lambo and giving this and you know whatever right in the beginning or you know any part of the video it may not i may not want to do that to get the click but maybe i want to just do a whiteboard and teach real estate, you yeah. know, or I want to talk about something about spirituality or whatever. So how do we, 
bring those two things to the middle. Because I know like, one could feel dry and the other one could feel fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a YouTuber. His name is Ryan Trahan. And he's one of my favorite YouTubers. And he's a really good example of a middle ground. Mm -hmm. So you have on one end of the spectrum, like the Mr. Beastification of YouTube, which is just like, you know, blowing up, giving millions of dollars to people, just high stakes, high everything fast, you know, really what, you know, a lot of people would watch, um, you know, really short attention span type stuff, you know, and like you were saying, sort of fake sometimes um, now that he's just super big. So and then on the other side of the spectrum, you have like these super chill, you know, like people that are just like, what's up, guys? Today, we're going to be talking about this. And then they go <laughs> and then they're just like they draw on their whiteboard. And those are both good. And the middle ground was this guy named uh, Ryan Trahan. He does sort of the middle ground, but like he has stakes in his video, but it's not like the headache inducing stakes. Like he did a super chill uh, videos. He calls it the penny series. It was literally the, the definition of minimalism, the penny series where he like he took a penny and he survived off of that penny for a week. And it was like almost like a business video. Like he did different like trades and stuff. And uh, he traded the penny for like a pen and then traded the pen for a dollar. And it was like it, did, it wasn't fast. It wasn't anything. It was just like sort of him chilling and, uh, you know, uh, you know, selling different things. But the the reason people watched his videos is because instead of them really wanting to see the stakes and everything there was stakes like he was trying to survive off of a week on a penny and that made it a little more interesting but the real reason that a lot of people watched him is because they enjoyed his personality they enjoyed hanging out with ryan trahan he had a really he has a really cool personality he's like funny you know like they really enjoyed hanging out with ryan trahan and what you're talking about is sort of you know having your whiteboard and uh doing real estate stuff and you know that could be very much well be a, like a daily series that you do you know for something like that and if you want to go towards the middle you know you uh probably like um do, tell stories like about different people that had stakes in their life you know and then this is what happened and you could still be sort of like chill and the audience has to have a reason to stick around whether it's you know you there they enjoy watching you or they want to see information or it could be both or it could be have stakes. It always has to have some level of stakes, you know? Um, but you know, that's sort of like the different ends of the spectrum. Uh, I don't know if that answered your question, but does well, that kind of, because so Grant Cardone's got his flashy videos and him mm -hmm. shooting cash into the air or buy yeah. his airplane, things like that. Then the best videos that I love about his videos is his real estate videos where he's actually sitting at his thing and he's got this whiteboard right here. And it's literally like two hours of just him telling you and how to underwrite deals, taking some phone calls, you know, looking at deals online, like basically what he's doing now, but just on yeah. YouTube. And I watched thousands of hours of that. That's actually where I got my first education and I watched it. And I, and I save certain ones. I will go back and watch again, you know, oops, that's the type of impact I want to kind of make on my hmm. YouTube, you know, where I'm actually doing some, I'm not, I don't know if I want to be an entertainer. Right. Hmm. And so what do you, how, how do we, how do we go about growing so, my, my channel? So I want to ask you what, why do you think that you sat and watched those videos? Cause I, I think I know the answer. Why do you think that you sat and watched those videos? I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to buy multifamily real estate. It's because Grant Cardone has an absurd amount of credibility to people in the business world. Mm -hmm. He has so much credibility that he could literally sit there and talk about business. And people are like, this is literally gold on paper. We need to get all of this information out of this. We need to watch it 10 times, you know. And he has credibility because he's Grant Cardone. You know, if Elon Musk came up and made a video, it was boring and he made a video on uh, business, people would obviously watch it because it's Elon Musk. If if Michael Jordan came and made a video on uh, basketball techniques, like shooting, you know, form and different stuff like that, people would watch it. Not because the video was retentive. 
is because it is that person, you know, it's, it's, it's Elon Musk, it's Grant Cardone, you know, and, and a little bit of that is because he does have the flashy video. Someone sees his flashy videos and they're like, I wonder how he got like that. Oh, wait, this is literally teaching me how to make a million dollars. What the heck? I want to click mm. on that, you know? So, okay. and I watched one of those videos where he was teaching. I watched one of those videos like three times, like how you were talking about. And the one where was, he was, uh, uh, he was in a room, uh, with a bunch of salesmen. Right. And, uh, he was teaching the salesman, uh, about money because he was like, if you don't know about money, you will never have your sales straight. And he literally, the first thing that he said is being a millionaire is not that much. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what is he saying? You know, I, you know, I'll hear this guy. I got to listen to this guy. He's like, this is how much being a millionaire is. And he showed me the math and I'm like, that is not a lot of money. Like million dollars is not as much as I thought it was. I thought you were in the money if you were a millionaire and he sort of dropped that. And I was like, I got to stick around this whole video. So (laughs) you got to drop a bomb and you got to be someone of credibility. You know, Mm. a video like that, you really need credibility with an audience. But if you're just like, if you're just like me, like some random kid that nobody knows, they wouldn't watch a video where I was explaining money, you know, but maybe, you know, Alex, you're sort of getting up to that credibility if you keep doing these masterminds and stuff. And it would get to a point to where you're able to do videos like that and get millions of views, you know. And, uh, and so you really need to build up credibility with your audience. Like I've sat and watched, you know, hours and hours of Mr. Beast podcasts because I want to learn YouTube. OK. And he knows YouTube better than anybody else in the world. So it's because he has the credibility there. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys are sitting here watching me and Alex talk about like some 17 year old and Alex talk about uh, money and, uh, you know, money and YouTube because we have credibility. Like we know this stuff and you guys know that we know this stuff. So you guys are sticking around to watch. So it's sort of that idea behind it. And that's why people watch videos like that. Yeah. Right. So also for everybody that's here, right. And, and we'll do this for about 10 more minutes. Ask your questions right now. This is your opportunity. Obviously, you guys could probably find JJ pretty easily, and he's got some time to be able to help you guys out. But ask your questions here. You know, this is an opportunity for you to have a life-changing moment, right? Ask something in which you will you will be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this from now on. I'm going to put my number in the chat. If anybody <laughs> wants to do, uh, if nice. anybody wants to do uh, <laughs> weekly, consulting calls with me uh uh text me or hit me up and we'll you know discuss certain things about youtube and how to grow a um channel and stuff like that but um yeah uh there's a few things that i need to tell you uh while we're waiting is if you're starting a youtube channel uh one thing that you need to do is stick to one niche what i mean by that is stick to one type of video because if you like let's say that you're making videos like Grant Cardone you're making money videos people are like I'm coming to you daily like even if you're getting 20 views a video right let's say that you you're like oh one day I want to make a video on uh gaming I want to play Minecraft for a day and you make a video on Minecraft you will get no views because it is a um YouTube knows what kind of audience to push you out to so the algorithm youtube mm. knows that uh your audience likes finance so they will push you out to finance people if finance people like say alex is scrolling on his youtube and he sees a minecraft video from greg cardone he's not really <laughs> gonna click on it i don't know i, or I might, might actually I, I don't know i think i would if grand <laughs> cardone all started playing video games i think i would watch some of that stuff yeah so but you know i do know what you mean because like you know, when I look at my Facebook things that pop up, it's always some animal stuff. It's lions and crocodiles and, and basketball and like some, some real estate stuff. Like, I don't know. People tell me, oh my God, I get, you know, I get politics and stuff like that. I'm like, I never even see that. That never even comes across my feet. And I see on YouTube, YouTube literally right when I open it, it's like the basketball highlights and it's like, you know, real estate stuff you know, and, and Grant Cardone pops up everywhere and some video games pop up. I'm like, all right, well, I guess YouTube knows what I want. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Grant's videos, his most viewed video 
is a highly edited, highly thought out, just like almost like a three minute documentary of his life. It's uh, yes. titled, Who is Grant Cardone? You know, because if you think about it, that is a question a lot of people would ask, like a famous person, you know, like, who is this guy? I've heard his name a million times. He's in the top of Google searches. Who is this guy? You know, and they're like, oh, this is who it is. And it's a very good video. It was a very well edited video. Obviously, Grant has like unlimited funding for his YouTube channel. So he would be able to uh, do, you know, different stuff like that. But mm -hmm, you're yeah. going to want to keep the same niche. And another thing is, uh, it, like in terms of payment on YouTube and like clickbait or not clickbait, but copyright and stuff, just don't put any like uh, music like that is copyrightable. You can literally type up no copyright music on YouTube. Um, you could, if you do it enough times, you could literally get your channel privileges taken away. Um, I suggest just, you know, sort of staying on the no copyright side of YouTube. Um, if your name is taken, would you combine your business name with your name or use your name with a period or underscore the Change thing, your name. <laughs> I think you're, yeah, I think you're talking about the, uh, URL on YouTube, like the at, like you have the at symbol and then your name, because those are actually taken, but like on YouTube, your actual name, people can share, you know, your YouTube channel name, but yeah, if you have your name and it like if you've already built a credible audience um then it'd probably be like more of a smarter idea to put an underscore or something but if you have like 20 followers or something then it's fine if you change your name like nobody's really gonna mind if you change your name you know you're still in that phase of molding your channel so you're able to do that stuff but like if you're you know at you know Mr. Beast height, he can't really change his name at this point. You know, it's done. He's he's Mr. Beast. You know, he's already built a brand around it. You know, yeah. different stuff like that. So, so, wait, so I love I love that you prepared for this call. I know you have notes and the talking points that you want to get to. So, thank you for taking the time to actually do that. That's great. Yeah. But we are getting towards the end of this this interview here. So I do want to, you know, how do people get started now? Like, there's probably people. Ninety nine percent of the people in this room right now are like uh youtube how do they get started i feel like it's so much you got to make a video you got to plan it out you got to get it edited then you got to put a description on there and you got to you know all this stuff where how do people get started like something um, that's feasible the idea so like you got to get ideas together um you got to really get creative on youtube uh that's why they call them creators because it's creativity um, you got to get creative with the amount of equipment you have, whatever you have, you know, uh, I think 99% of people on here probably have some form of video uh, shooting thing or else they wouldn't be able to be on this call. So <laughs> well, they have, a phone. all you need is a phone. Yeah. All you really need is a phone. Like Mr. Beast, his first 10,000 or followers or something, he literally filmed videos on his phone. Like, so it was, you know, he did that you know it's old school stuff um but give, you know, give us the process give us the process in which like somebody that has no idea what to do can pick up a phone film a video is there an editing software on the phone that can just do it for yeah. you kind of whatever and then posting it writing a description can i get ai to write the description like how can somebody at least get started before they get like all in right at least to get their feet wet um, I use, so first step is to write a script or write out the idea. Um, the thumbnail, the idea. Even, yeah. What? The thumbnail, the idea. Yeah. Before you even start filming, you need to have like a few hours of at least preparing because people are just like, I'm going to get my phone out and I'm going to film this video and I'm going to post it and we're going to go viral, you know, but <laughs> you've got to get the, the idea and the thumbnail also together. You need to get the thumbnail before the video so you know what you're trying to portray during the video. So you know that you're not giving the audience false hope if you're clicking on your video on a thumbnail and then you don't you know, live up to that or you know, different stuff like that. You're gonna wanna make multiple thumbnail ideas, make your thumbnails beforehand. All, all how do we make a thumbnail? How, how, I don't even know how to make a thumbnail. You go to Canva, um, what do I do? Yeah, you can do it on Canva. I okay, so I use Pixlr, 
That's Pixlr. a free website. Okay, I'm going to write down a bunch of stuff right now. Tell me. Okay, go. Pixlr. I use Pixlr, but I do not pay. Here's how I do that. It show, it's, allows you to actually create the photos on there, right? But it doesn't allow you to download the photos off of it. Um, so unless you pay. So I literally create the photo and then I screenshot it and then I get the photo for free essentially off of Pixlr. So uh, if you have a phone, you can, uh, I'm sure there's editing uh, things on phone that you're able to make pictures with. Uh, I don't know if Pixlr's a thing. I think Canva's on phone. Uh, what's your user-friendly video editing software for newbies? Uh, yeah, Canva is free. But yeah, so my video-friendly editing software you can use CapCut. You can use uh, iMovie if you have an iMode, uh, iPhone. Uh, I suggest using uh, iMovie first. And then once you get a little more experienced, use sort of like CapCut and stuff because CapCut has a lot more functions than iMovie. But, you know, it's fairly okay, simple. Is, that, is the iMovie on my phone? I can just edit stuff on my phone? Yeah, CapCut is also on your phone. Yeah, both of those are on your phone. If you have CapCut, an iPhone. CapCut, iMovie. Yeah. Those are now, the do I actually have to go make the edits myself? Um, or I mean, is there an, an like a bot yet. that can do it? What? <laughs> no, there's no bot. That can... I mean, I've, I think there's some people that do it, but like the people that actually get views do it themselves because okay. nobody knows how to get a human's attention better than a human, you know, because humans Fine. know what they want to watch, you for know, for now, I'll get, I'll give that <laughs> to you for now. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So uh i suggest using canva or canva and uh pixlr for your uh your uh thumbnails mm -hmm. um or like even if your thumbnails like good enough quality like if all it is is just you standing in front of, of a cool car you know just make that the thumbnail but uh always look up you know for shorts you don't really need a thumbnail because the way that click through rate doesn't happen on shorts you're obviously swiping and you see um some people do custom thumbnails for shorts. I don't, but I probably will start doing it here soon just because it's, you know, it's there. You're able to do it. Um, uh, give suggestions for tags and other statistics on YouTube. Yeah, uh, does that work? Hashtags like you, and all that stuff. What do you mean? Like, oh, like the um, ha hashtags and stuff. Uh, I'm going to say this. Um, I've, I talked to a guy. His name was Loki Jude. He is one of the best consultants in the world. He has consulted with, like, he's, you know, talked to Mr. Beast. He has consulted with some of the biggest channels in the world. He got a guy 1.6 million views on a video, and his, like, he was, like, at 1,000 subs, which is, you know, unheard of. So he's, like, one of the best um, consultants in the world. And I got to talk to him, and I asked him, does hashtags do anything? And he said, if you're, he said, if you don't use hashtags, it does like almost nothing. Like don't use hashtags. He said, if your video is good enough, it'll get views. He said, and also, did you guys just see what he did right there? He just said the thing and then he went on this whole thing. And then he said, hash, I was like waiting. I was like, are you yeah. going to tell us if hashtag does anything or not? <laughs> My mind is prone to it. My mind is love it. That was good. I caught it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, hashtags don't really do anything if you have a good enough video it'll get views if you don't have a good video it won't get views that's really the only thing ideas are very important for making good a good video if you don't have a good idea you will not have a good video so you need idea video thumbnail and those three things are good then you're you're perfect what about description a description i mean you could write a description if you want uh i mean a lot of people do it just because i mean they have a lot of follower followers and they've been doing it for years. You know, they want to giving them information like where a, to go and stuff. What? You, they're giving them information of where else to go and how yeah, to follow yeah. them. All that stuff. Okay. So uh, I just want to go back for a second. I think this is really important what you did right there. We were out talking about the hashtags, if yeah. hashtags works. And then you went to talk about this Jew guy and how he does this for other people and all of that. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, does hashtag work? Right. That was freaking awesome. So everybody, I think like that right there wrapped up the entire like conversation about how to create your video, how you should be thinking about it. And that was a great example. 
I don't know if you just do it like, you know, unconsciously now, but that was awesome. Yeah. And I caught it. So I'm proud of myself. I'm learning as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, any last tips that you want to give to the audience here? And then also you're doing another live this week, right? Yes. I am hosting my parents call. Um, I'm talking about fix and flip loans. I will put the link for that in the chat it is at Wednesday, this Wednesday. Fix and flip loans. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if you join the call, then I'll tell you why it's important. <laughs> all right. All right. So, all right. Give us, give us the link. Give us, you know, something I'll put, I'll also put it in the follow-up email. Mm -hmm. cool. Um, Thank you. Okay, just I, I guess you know Jerry or Shelly, you guys can stick the link in here. I think I already, did. yeah, I already did right there. I put the yeah. link right there. Yeah. How come I don't see it? I don't know. Oh, weird. Okay, so what other last tips you got for us? So, yeah, this was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely for me because I'm super into it right now, and I just, you know, yeah. I, I want to get the real the YouTube thing going. Yeah. So my last thing is if you're starting a channel. Uh, don't just post one video like like so please don't just post one video post at least five videos at once to start off because you want people binging your content you want people to like a video so much that they go and watch another video on your channel and then another and then another and then like before they knew it they've already like an hours went by and they were just sitting there watching your videos and you can't do that without um without only one with only one video you know you need so more five videos at one time before you release it because i have i have yeah. two done i'm gonna mm -hmm. wait until i have five mm -hmm. and we're gonna launch it yeah okay, yeah so great. it's almost like you're you're starting you know because nobody's like if someone sees that high quality you know video that you're putting out and they're like oh i want to go see it they see like these one hour master <laughs> like what is this you know so um do that and like youtube has playlists. nothing you on and you. playlists right um playlists are fine you know uh i don't really you know if you do different series you can put them in playlists that's 100 percent up to you that really doesn't have much to do with it like if someone likes your video enough they'll go looking for it or they'll just search it up you know if you make a good enough video um i'm posting yeah. a video here soon and uh I'm going to be starting a series here soon and it's not really going to be in a playlist because uh, I'm just doing one episode after the other. But like, if you have episodes spread out, then maybe it's a good idea to put in a playlist, you know? Okay. Awesome. So we're going to get into the network, the, the, the speed networking part of this, but before we go um, and break out and meet, you know, get to meet new people. Um, I have a summit coming up on Thursday this week on April 20th. Okay. So we have, you know, Brad Selmrock, Vina Jetty, Robert Martinez, uh, Hala Taha, all the, all the stars that have ever been on my show besides JJ and Nick, um, will be there to, I'm going to be there too. Yeah. Yeah. Nick will be there to do a little session and JJ will be on the next one. But, um, you know, I, I put a collection of about 20 people that have really impacted my life. I spend a lot of money on this conference to really honor these people that have changed, you know, and helped me become the person I am today. It's my first conference ever. So, you know, legendsimpactsummit.com. Nick, can you stick it in there? Because when I typed it, it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. So if I you want to check it out, there's a free ticket. There's also a smaller VIP ticket that gives you like a lot of the things that, you know, that are given away by Hala, Robert. You know, they're giving things away. So this is not a conference, virtual conference, like other virtual conference you have seen. Okay. It is not on Zoom. It is on something called AirMeet. You will literally go there and it looks like a stage. There will be different booths. It's pretty, pretty high end. And um, it's going to be really great. It's all day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time, April 20th, legendsimpactsummit.com. And um, Alex, yeah. your podcast. Come Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to launch my podcast called That Changed My Life. And um, all those speakers have also done episodes on those with me. And we do have a link in my Instagram to sign up and apply for a spot on the podcast. You just have to kind of share a little bit of your story of, you know, what was a story that 
really change your life and why do you really want to tell it? Okay. So yeah. Thank you guys for, for this portion of the call and JJ, you are a badass. Thank you for, um, you know, for existing and thank you, Shelly and, and Jerry for, for making that happen too. Thanks. All right. So you guys will all start seeing my YouTube soon and it's going to be a collaboration with JJ on, on, on having it all happen. So Nick's going to put you guys in the breakout rooms. Go to it. All right. Go to it. Meet